everyone. I am Xiao Yu Cao from Duke University. I am going to introduce our work, Local Model Poisoning Attacks to Visiting Robust Federated Learning. This is a joint work with Ming Hongfang, Jing Yuan Jia, and my advisor, Niu Gong. Federated Learning was proposed to solve the problem of collaborative learning with decentralized data. In Federated Learning, there are many worker devices and a master device. Each worker has its own local training data and maintains a local model. The master also maintains a global model while aggregating local models. The goal of federated learning is to learn a good global model without sharing private local data with the master. To achieve this, federated learning performs the following three steps in each iteration of the learning process. In the first step, the master sends the global model parameters to the workers and the workers update their local models to the global model. In the second step, the workers train their local models using their own local training data. The new local models after the training will be sent to the master. In the third step, the master aggregates the local models to obtain a new global model using some certain aggregation rule. These three steps will be repeated until some stop condition is met, for example, convergence. In real world, federated learning has been applied to multiple scenarios. For instance, Google uses federated learning in their Gboard application to predict the next word. WeBank deploys federated learning to collaboratively predict credit risk. Melody uses it for drug discovery. However, we need to take the security problems that federated learning faces seriously. A previous work has shown that a single malicious worker can arbitrarily manipulate the global model when the traditional weighted main aggregation is used. This indicates that we need some more robust methods to protect federated learning. And there comes visiting robust federated learning. In visiting robust federated learning, visiting robust aggregation rules are proposed as a defense. They claim that with this visiting robust aggregation rules, they can learn a good global model even if some bounding number of workers are visiting, or in other words, send arbitrary local models. The main idea of this visiting robust aggregation rules is to filter out statistical outliers among local models, and existing methods include CRAM, trim domain, coordinate-wise median, and Boolean. We will evaluate these methods in our slides. Though these methods are claimed to be Byzantine robust, they have some key limitations in common. For example, they only provide asymptotic bounds, which are far from practice. Specifically, they only provide order-optimal bounds on the error rates of parameters. However, even if such order-optimal bounds are given, there is no guarantee on the classification performance of the learned global model. Another main limitation is the strong assumptions made in this works. They assume the data is IID or the optimization problem is strongly convex, which usually are not practical in the real world. And our work designs practical attacks that can increase classification error rates of the learned global model in visiting robust federated learning. We achieve this by sending carefully crafted local models from compromised workers to master. Here is our threat model. In our threat model, the attacker's goal is to increase the classification error rates of the global model. We assume the attacker controls some compromised workers. These workers can either be good workers that have been co-occupied by the attacker or fake workers that are injected by the attacker. The attacker can send arbitrary local models to the server from those compromised workers. We also assume that the attacker knows everything about the compromised workers. What is more, the server may know or not know the aggregation rule used by the master and local model or data on other benign workers. Here is an illustration of our threat model. We assume the master is honest and the communication channel is safe. However, workers might be compromised the compromised workers can arbitrarily modify the local models and then send them to the master. 
after the master aggregates the received local models to get a global model that has been poisoned. As we discussed, an attacker may or may not know the model or data on other benign workers. If an attacker knows such information, the attacker can perform full knowledge attack. Otherwise, the attacker only has knowledge about the compromised workers and can perform partial knowledge attack. Also, the attacker may know the aggregation rule the master uses or not. Under such threat model, how can an attacker perform its attack? Our idea is as follows. Assume we have a global model from previous iteration, denoted by W previous. For simplicity, we assume there are only two workers whose local models without attack are W1 and W2. Then we can aggregate W1 and W2 to get the new global model in the current iteration if there is no attack. We denote it by W current. The arrow indicates the direction that global model changes. This direction is supposed to reduce the classification error rate. When an attacker is present, let's assume the attacker controls worker 1. Instead of sending W1 to the master, the attacker will manipulate the local model to be W1 prime, such that the aggregated result become W current prime. The global model is deviated the most towards the inverse of the benign direction. Formally, we can formulate our idea as the following optimization problem. Here, W is the W current in the illustration. For simplicity, we omit the subscript. Similarly, W prime is W current prime in the illustration, and S is the vector of the changing directions of W, which is the direction of the arrow in the illustration. Note that our formula can be applied to any aggregation rule A. As we discussed before, the attacker may have different knowledge. In the case that the attacker has full knowledge over the local models, the attacker can directly solve the optimization problem. In the case of partial knowledge, where attacker knows only the local models of the compromised workers, the attacker can estimate the global model when the aggregation rule is unknown to the attacker, the attacker can take a guess on A and perform corresponding attacks. This slide shows our experimental settings. We assume there are in total 100 workers and 20 of them are compromised by default. We consider a non-ID data distribution, which is common in practice. We evaluate our attacks on four different datasets. MNIST, Fashion MNIST, CH MNIST, and Breast Cancer Diagnostic Dataset. We use MNIST as the default dataset and will show results on MNIST in the following slides. Here is a table showing the effectiveness of our tags. In this table, each row represents a visiting robust aggregation rule and each column represents an attack. The numbers are the corresponding classification error rates of the learned global model. No attack means there is no attack in federated learning. Gaussian and label flip are two baseline attacks we consider. Gaussian means the attacker adds Gaussian random noise to local models before sending them to master. And label flip means the attacker flip the labels of the local training data. Partial is our attack in the partial knowledge setting, and full indicates our attack in the full knowledge setting. From the table, we can see that our attacks are very effective. We explore the impact of percentage of compromised workers. This figure shows the curve of error rate versus percentage of compromised worker devices when trimmed main aggregation is used. We can observe that when the percentage of compromised workers increases, the error rate of the learned global model under our attack also increases. However, the baseline attacks are still not effective even when many workers are compromised. We also explore the impact of degree of non-ID of the training data. This figure shows the curve of error rate versus degree of non-ID when training aggregation is used. We find that when the degree of non-ID becomes larger, all attacks become more effective. We mentioned in previous slides that an attacker may not know the aggregation rule that is used by the master. 
In this case, the attacker needs to take a guess. We explore the transferability of our tags between aggregation rules and the table shows the error rates. Each row represents a partial knowledge attack and each column represents an aggregation rule. We observe that some attacks can transfer while others cannot. We also compare our attacks with data poisoning attacks. We select a state-of-the-art data poisoning attack and compare the error rates with our attacks in this table. Each row is an aggregation rule and each column is an attack. As we can see here, our attacks outperforms the data poisoning attacks with large gaps. Further, we consider possible defenses that could be used to defend against our attacks. We assume the master itself owns a small validation dataset. Error rate-based rejection removes local models based on their impact on validation error rates, while loss function-based rejection removes local models based on their impact on validation loss. We further consider a combination of these two defenses. This table shows the defense results. The defenses are effective in some cases, but not in others. The results indicate that we are in need of more advanced defenses. Now comes the conclusion. We propose a general local model poisoning attack for any visiting robust federation learning. And we show that our attack can increase the classification error rates of the learned global models in visiting robust federation learning. Our work highlights that new defenses are needed to defend against our attacks. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please send emails to the following addresses.